Hello, hello, and welcome on into another episode of the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. I'm Sarah. I'm Matt. Today for our Saturday episode, we're exploring more liqueurs. We have Dom Benedictine's B and B. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and click that notification bell. Matt. All right. Dom B and B. Look at that beautiful label. Looks pretty similar, obviously, to the regular Benedictine. Differences, of course, if you want the history of Benedictine, we'll have that uh, linked as well. So Dom Benedictine, this is an 80 proof liqueur, is a combination of Benedictine, it's Dom Benedictine and French cognac combined. It takes two years to put them together and balance them in an oak barrel. So it's also aged for quite some time. Ernest Hemingway was the first person that mentioned blending Benedictine and brandy in his novel, The, Mer in the Mercenaries, 1919. And it's been a hit at bars apparently ever since. In 1937, it started to be made in France. And by the end of 1930, it came to the U.S. as a already basically a pre-bottle cocktail, more or less. Um, it of course, it was developed as consumers really liked less sweet cordials. I started uh, enjoying this. It became very popular during Prohibition. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I... I We've been going down this liqueur series for quite a while, and they're all just ridiculously sweet. So he said less sweet cordials, and I got kind of excited. You should get excited. <laughs> it's less sweet. So like I said, so the combination of the brandy and the Benedict team started to get really popular in the U.S. Uh, during Prohibition, at, especially at this club called Club 21 in Manhattan. was made a very, very famous drink. And also the distillery is the most visited attraction in Normandy, France. It's kind of cool. So cool tidbits. All right, so let's see what we think. See if it's actually less sweet and to Will's like. It's got a little bit of a licorice note in there. It does, just a little it really bit. Does. Yeah, a lot of uh, like herbs and fennel. Yeah, very herbs. Herbs. Um, citrus driven as far yeah. as the fruit note goes. Orange. It's orange, honey, black tea. Honey, a little bit of huh? lemon. Anise. I get more of that licorice. The yeah, a lot of lemon. Before uh, I get in the glass. Give a little spin here, see what happens. There's some, what the heck is that? Um, coat my glass here with a little bit. Basil. Almost Ooh. a medicinal note. Um, it's like a basil. Like, uh, what the hell yeah, is that medicine? Coriander. Robitussin. Robitussin. Oh. That, yeah, it's that Robitussin like, if you smell uh, like when you're as a kid with the Robitussin, it reminds me kind of that. When I when I smell these ones that have that licorice background to it, it reminds me of uh, Nyquil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's very herbal, and you know Nyquil is too, so it mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah, but yeah, it's an herbal liqueur, you know, with, with you know cognac added to it. So okay, I don't know, it smells good to me. Hmm. It tastes just like I we all described in the the nose. I mm -hmm. mean. It's got that herbal mm -hmm. forward and then kind of a licorice-y finish, but it's not overpowering licorice. It's not no. like Jaeger licorice. No, no Cognac did a really good job of mellowing that out some because I'm not a huge black licorice fan. No. But yeah. I, get, I get a lot of herbs on the front, a lot mm -hmm. of like basil in like mm -hmm. Italian seasoning mix. Sage, and, tarragon. Yeah. Kind of like, vibes. Tons of black tea on black tea and tobacco on the finish. Like, yeah. Very vegetal. Little black pepper and with the honey and a little bit of the licorice and the fennel. That's and really nice. It's not as sweet. No, no it's not. It's not really sweet. not as sweet. It does have yeah. a little sweet thing to it, but it's not overly sweet. Yeah, it's more like the honey sweet. Right. This would be plenty of sweetness for my dessert. A cup of coffee and a cup of this. Um, if I were if I really wanted something very sweet to end my night with, this would be considered very sweet on, on my palate. Uh, to end my night with something for dessert. Like that's how my, I'm, I'm a meat eater. I, I eat, I eat steak and that's really, you know, that's what I prefer to eat at all times. So it, it, this is just not, this is about as sweet as my palate really can tolerate with still being enjoyable. Uh, and I could, I could enjoy a cup of coffee and a little cup of this and, and really enjoy that after a meal. Yeah. It's a good, uh, as I say, a digestive. Digestive. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's not I bad. Like it. Yeah. It's good. I enjoy it. It's good stuff. Yeah. So like I said, this is, you know, was all the rage and still, you know, pro, probably one of the most popular, of course, today is the Dom B&B. So people are requesting this. 
So here you go. Here's your Dom BNB request. What is our approximate price point of the BNB? Um, I think they're like thirty-five now. They're not bad. So okay. Not okay. Lovely, lovely. All right. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and click that notification bell. And until next time. Keep on crusading for better liquids in your glass. Cheers. Cheers. I like that one. Yeah, that was not bad. Okay. This funnel, so let's put it back in. Heard that putting it back in. Hey, oh. I'll put it back. I should push it back all the time. I'll finish stuff. Screw that. Matthew Crary said, if you don't finish it, just pour it back in the bottle. It's fine. I'm, hey, she's a master blender. I believe her. That's true.